So I've got my hands on the new Galaxy Z Flip 6 for a few weeks now, and I have two conclusions here. If you've been waiting on the sideline to buy a flip phone all of these years, this might be the time to cash in. Like seriously, I like the update Samsung did here, but if you haven't been convinced of this form factor in the past, or if you already own the Z Flip 5, I'm not sure Samsung did much of anything to convince you to buy one of these. The Z Flip 6 is generally the same phone we've come to know over the years, but as we go through this this video, we'll talk about the changes of its design, the new AI features, the new camera, the bigger battery, and hopefully you can decide for yourself if it's worth the more expensive price tag, which by the way, went up $100, not down, which feels like the complete opposite of the mission here, which is to bring more affordable folding devices to people around the world. Okay, so let's start with changes to the design. The only obvious visual change that lets you know this is the new Z Flip 6 is that the camera rings are now matching the color of your phone, which to be honest is pretty cool. But the second you actually pick this up and you start using it, things feel different in subtle but nice ways. The frame of this phone is no longer glossy. It's this matte aluminum finish that feels really nice and looks premium in person. When you open and close this device, the hinge feels really good. It feels better than it's ever felt in the past. The phone now is IP48 rated as well, so you get both the dust and water resistance, which is kind of a big deal for folding phones, since a lot of them don't have this level of resistance rating, making the Z Flip 6 one of the more durable flip phones out there that you can buy. And there's also a ton of fun colors to choose from, especially the crafted black. That one looks super sleek. Samsung actually sent me the blue color, and I actually really like it. It looks so clean in person. There's also these cases that can light up too from Samsung that I didn't actually get to try, but I saw them and like they're just fully leaning into the fun factor of this phone, which is really cool to see. Other things worth mentioning is the fingerprint scanner works really good. The speakers actually sound pretty decent on here. Like it's almost as good as my S24 Ultra. I don't know if my ears are, are playing tricks with me, but I can't really tell that much of a difference between the two. Something worth mentioning for all the newcomers to flip phones, if you've never actually had one before, these are narrower phones than like a regular slab phone like the S24. So there is a tiny adjustment period when it comes to typing because everything is closer together, but it's nothing to be too worried about. The side effect of the phone actually being less wide is that it is way easier to hold with one hand, which actually I really appreciate. Okay, so now let's dive into the display or displays since there's two. The inside display is exactly what you'd expect from Samsung. It's very bright at 2600 nits this time around, so brighter than last year. Very colorful, super sharp, buttery smooth, thanks to the 120 hertz refresh rate. This is always where Samsung shines. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about this in the comments. I'm just gonna address this right now. The crease of the Flip 6 is only noticeable in certain lighting. I just wanna make it very clear, like I don't want that visual to deter you from the phone. Like, trust me here, it becomes invisible when you're using it. I actually forget it's even there 99.99% of the time. Like Samsung did a really good job with the screen this time around and you just, you don't think it's there unless you purposely are looking for it. On to the other display, which is the cover screen. I have two like, differing opinions here. For who Samsung is marketing this phone to, which is more like everyday, like normal people, they're going to love this. It's bright, it's an AMOLED display. You get access to a variety of really cool widgets without needing to open the phone. This is the kind of stuff that helps people actually buy into this idea of a flip phone. In contrast, if you're like a tech geek, like me, or you're just a huge like enthusiast, you may be a little bit disappointed here because the outer display is the exact same as last year. Like Samsung didn't change anything. It's 60 Hertz. It's nowhere near the same quality as the inner display. And if I'm being honest, the competition like the Razer Plus has a way more futuristic looking cover display than Samsung has right now. But I digress. I, I just, I don't know if this matters too much to a lot of people. I'm not gonna be the judge of that. I think as long as the outer display works, most people are gonna be happy and it does work really well for the most part. So something that Samsung emphasized so much during their presentation to me about the new Z Flip 6 is the new AI features. There is a lot pure, like a lot of really cool stuff. But if I'm being honest with myself, I just don't see myself using a lot of what Samsung has here 
even though it's really cool? For starters, you can sketch images on your device and let the AI turn them into images inspired by your scribbles. The quality of what you get returned to you is kind of hit or miss, but it is a cool feature nonetheless. This same idea applies to real pictures you take. You can sketch in all kinds of things into your real photos and let the AI do its best to bring to life photorealistic elements into your pictures. And again, it's very cool. It's kind of hit or miss depending on your picture and what you're trying to draw into it. There's also an exclusive interpreter feature where it will leverage the cover screen to assist in conversations in different languages between two people, which actually helps a little bit instead of having you sort of both looking down at the screen like this, you can sort of have it flipped up and actually have like a proper more, more of like a more proper conversation than just staring down at your phone. Then there's all the other stuff that we've seen before, like circle the search to help you identify unknown subjects and pictures or things around you. Voice recorder allows you to record conversations and transcribe them even with multiple speakers. And again, like all of this is really cool. And you can find all of the available AI features within the settings app to tinker with on your free time if you end up buying the phone. I just wanna make it clear that I just, I don't personally, see these AI features as a reason to buy this phone. As much as Samsung would try to market it otherwise, again, like don't get me wrong, there are useful things here. I'm gonna keep saying that. I just, I wanna see more. I wanna, I wanna see Samsung transcend from like a bunch of separate AI features to something more uniform, something that is like a true personal AI assistant across your entire device that uses all the data in your device to help you, like kind of like a next generation of Bixby, similar to what we're hoping to see from Apple with Apple Intelligence come in the fall. And I know that's in beta. We don't even know if Apple can actually deliver on that yet, but that's what they're promising. And that's way more exciting than what Samsung has for us right now. I mean, Samsung really has to actually go in that direction if I'm kind of thinking big picture, because if they don't, they're going to be left behind. But I have a feeling we'll, we'll see more of that come 2025 when the S25 Ultra comes out, that's probably when they will talk about their like next generation steps of AI. Anyways, I digress. Um, moving on to the cameras. Thank goodness was my initial reaction. Samsung finally put some quality cameras into the Z Flip 6 with a new 50 megapixel main sensor, which is the same one you'll actually find on the S24 and S24 Plus, paired with an ultra wide lens. The pictures coming out of here are great for the most part. There aren't gonna be the best of the best, like the stuff you'd find on the S24 Ultra or the 15 Pro Max, but they are more than good enough to impress people. The reason why I bring up that comparison to those other phones is because we have to remember this phone from Samsung starts at the thousand dollars, but it can become more expensive depending on how you configure it. And you can find an S24 Ultra right now for around the same price on discount, which has way better cameras than the Flip 6. That's one of my gripes with folding phones, by the way, is that they're so expensive, but they never put in the best cameras to justify that price. Like you're paying a huge premium for the fact that it folds, but you lose out on the camera side of things. Back to my experience with the Z Flip 6 cameras, I recently took this phone on a run with me and it held up really well. I actually did a lot of video recording on my 15K run and documented like really cool sites that I was seeing as I was running. It was in 4K, 30 FPS, and it looks really good off of this phone. Honestly, it's gonna be some of the best video recording that you can get from an Android, given that it is using the S24 sensor for the most part. Also, because this phone folds, it's a lot nicer to bring with me on a run to like capture like what I'm doing versus something like an iPhone or an S24 Ultra. So just a little bit of a side note for any runners watching this video. One of the side effects as well of this phone having a cover screen is that the selfies you take will drastically look better because the cover screen acts as a mirror and you actually get to use the main sensor to take those pictures, which is really cool. There's also a new AI feature called AI Zoom where the AI will automatically reframe the picture to fit all new subjects in the frame. It works, it's cool, like this is actually pretty useful. As for battery life, it feels a lot better than what I remember from the previous generation. And my feelings are actually correct. Uh, Samsung actually put in a slightly large battery after I researched this after the fact that actually allows this phone to last a full day on a single charge and not have too much battery anxiety. The standby time is also really good too. I left this phone unused for hours with the always on display turned on and the battery like 
barely dropped any percentage points. Okay, so if you made it to this part of the video, I think it's safe to assume that you can feel that I like the Z Flip 6 for the most part. Like in my opinion, it is the best foldable Samsung offers for most people because it's still within the realm of attainability, unlike the Z Fold 6, which is, that is very expensive. But even though it is within that realm of affordability, sort of, should you buy this phone? Because this year's model cost $100 more, not less. And you're gonna be left with cameras that are still gonna feel lackluster compared to other flagship phones in the same price range. Many people prioritize great photo quality. It's why the iPhone 15 Pro sells more than the regular 15, because people want the best cameras. That's why I'm highlighting this issue. And it's not that this phone takes bad photos, but it just, you can get way better photos on other phones for the same price tag. So despite all the fun and unique flip features that you can get on here, I find it hard to recommend the Z Flip 6 when it's just priced so similarly to the S24 Ultra and the 15 Pro Max from Apple. I firmly believe that traditional phones still offer more value in 2024 for the average person. Like people want the best photo quality possible. People want the best battery life, which I haven't even talked about yet in this video. Other phones in this price range give you way better battery life than the Z Flip 6 because this is just such a, a small, skinny folding device that this can only last you so long during the day. So at the end of the day, if you're somebody that just wants something fun and you want to try something cutting edge and different, by all means, like get the Z Flip 6. This is the best version of it yet from Samsung and it's a really well-rounded device that really executes on everything that it promises. Like this is a really fun phone. I'm just saying that for the same price, I feel that for most people, the features you get on the S24 Ultra, that's kind of hard to pass up. I think a lot of you would be better served getting that phone, again, unless you want something different. Anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you guys all in the next video. Peace.